Hello everyone, welcome to your physics teacher and with me Mr. Fernando and today we're going to be looking at section 1.1 from the Nelson textbook and let's get started by reading the question here together. Which of the following quantities are vectors and which are scalars? Be sure to explain the reasoning for your answer. So let's see what it says for part A. A bird flies a distance of 20 meters. Hmm. So first, let's try to recall quickly what is a scalar quantity and what is a vector quantity. So a scalar is anything that only has a magnitude or a length, whereas a vector is something that has a magnitude or a length, but as well has some direction associated with it. So let's quickly write it down. So now that we have a criteria, we can look at our question once again. So if we're looking at a bird flying a distance of 20 meters, we only know the distance that's been traveled. We don't know in what direction. So we have to say that this will be a scalar quantity. And for part B, a train is traveling at 100 kilometers per hour due north. So in this case, they're giving us both a magnitude, which is 100 kilometers per hour, and a direction, which is due north. So this would be considered a vector quantity. And for part C, it takes an athlete 10.37 seconds to run 100 meters. So just because they're giving you more information, they're trying to trick you here. But time is a scalar quantity and 100 meters is a scalar quantity. So it didn't give us a direction. So for part C, this is all just a scalar quantity information. Now for question number two, it asks, explain the following in your own words. A, the difference between position and displacement. So for this, if you watch my previous videos, I always reference that we have a tree and we have our famous cheetah. And now if we want to describe the position of the cheetah, we always choose the origin a stationary object such as a tree. So to describe the position, that requires us to choose an origin and to locate the distance from that origin. So position has to do with a, a distance from a fixed origin. So normally the position could be given in terms of uh, a length. So you could say three meters from the tree or so forth. They didn't say position vector though, but position in this case, because it only has the length, this is a scalar quantity. If they had said position vector, that would have been a vector quantity. But that displacement, This is the change in position. Now displacement can also be a vector quantity, but in this case, they might be referring to only the scalar part. So if they're saying to the scalar component of it, then we're only looking at the change in position. So in this case, we have to go back to our cheetah and suppose that it's moving to the right. And to indicate the index number, let's put it above. So in other words, the frame, the cheetah begins, and this is where the cheetah ends. So the displacement vector 
is the change in position. So it's going to just look at from its position at zero, so the initial position, and the distance to the final position. So that's what we mean by the change in position. So this is the magnitude of the displacement vector, so you could just write delta d. And for position vector, you could write as d. Again, if they said position vector or the spacing vector, things would be slightly different. So I'll let you comment on that if you have any questions. So that's A. Now for B, the difference between distance and displacement, we could look at another example. So in this case, let's say that we have an object Let's have our tree again, actually. I just realized that the tree should be brown for the log part and then green for the leaves, but I got that reversed. So in this case, uh, l let's assume that our cheetah moves from the zeroth frame to the first frame and then it comes back to where it started. So we can say that the distance is the actual path that was traveled. So it was some distance to the right and then the same distance back. So we can assume that this is one meter. So move one meter to the right, one meter to the left. So the distance travel will be two meters. But for displacement only looks at the change in position. So since you went to the right and you came back to your starting point, your change in position in this case is actually zero because you started where you, end, you ended where you started off. So this is one way you can distinguish between this distance and displacement. Distance is the path that you actually traveled and you add up the length cover. And displacement looks at your change in position. So from your starting point to the final point. If you have any questions from my explanations, please leave a comment and I'll be sure to get back to you. Now for question three, we have, what is the displacement of a locomotive Locomotive is just a car that changes its position from 25 meters west to 76 meters west. So here we have to recall the formula for displacement. Now we are dealing with the vector quantity for displacement, which is the change in position. So the final position vector minus initial position vector. And in the question here, we can identify the given quantities. It says that this locomotive changes its position from, so that would be the initial position, 25 meters west, to, so two will be the final position, 76 meters west. So from our formula, we just need to subtract these two quantities. So the final is 76 meters west. And the initial was 25 meters west. Now, since these two are actually like terms, in other words, like directions, we can just do the subtraction there. So 76 minus 25. That will give us 51 meters west. Now, there is another way to do this, which is if we indicate the east direction as positive and the west direction as negative. So this is how we can write this instead. So 76 meters west can be written as negative 76 minus, and 25 meters west can be written as negative 25. 
So negative 76 plus 25 would be negative 51. But the negative just represents the west direction, so you can rewrite this as 51 meters west. Which makes sense if we were to draw our picture, right? So if first we go 7, 25 meters west, and then we go 76 meters west. No, 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 sorry. Our final position is 76 meters west. And since we are subtracting these vectors, we have to write delta D equals to D final minus D initial. And one way to think of a subtraction is to think of it like addition. So D final plus negative D initial. So whenever you're doing vector addition, you attach them head to tail. And let's see what that would look like. So the final vector we're just redrawing. And now for D initial, we need to change it in the opposite direction since it's negative. Sorry. And you see how the resultant is from the tail of the first to the head of the last. So that's delta D, which makes sense because it was pointing to the left, so it was west, and it's approximately 51 in this case. So you could do it uh, visually just to think about it. Okay, uh, we still have one more question, so let's get started with number four. Make sure you hit a like, show your support with this video. A car changes its position from 52 kilometers west to 139 kilometers east. What is the car's displacement? So as we saw before, the formula for displacement is the final position minus the initial position. So from the question, now we need to identify what was the initial position and which is the final position. So a car changes its position from, from, so that's the starting point, to, that would be the ending point, oh sorry, it was east. So let's do this subtraction now. So the final is 139 kilometers east minus 52 kilometers west. But before we try to even subtract these, notice that we have different directions. So we have east and west. So think of it like, like terms and make sure that they're all going along the same direction. So we can represent west as negative east. So we're going to do a little trick. So instead of writing west, we could write that as negative east. So minus negative 52 kilometers east. So simplifying this is 139 kilometers east plus 52 kilometers east. Which is 191. East. But uh, this method is not as nice as using the convention that if we assume the east and west have a sign associated with it. So east is considered positive and west is negative. So let's redo this. So for the displacement, 
since it's east, we keep that as positive. And the part that's west, we put a negative in there. So minus negative 52. So this gives us a positive number because you'll be doing 139 minus negative 52, which will be plus. So altogether it will be 191 kilometers. And since you have the plus, that indicates the east direction. So again, uh, you can choose the method that you're more comfortable with. I personally prefer the second one. Oh, that's it for this lesson. So uh, make sure that you hit subscribe. That way I'll tune you in to the next lesson.